Standing before the Iron Throne, Danny steps forward and kisses the man she loves. A perfect kiss. Their eyes closed, his hand behind her head, her hand on his cheek. Danny's eyes open suddenly as she draws a sharp breath. John's eyes open as well, already filling with tears. For a moment, neither moves, as if moving will make this real. We see John with his hand still on the hilt of the dagger he just lodged in Danny's heart. <laughs> so Jon Snow game-ending Daenerys is one of the many things that the Game of Thrones final season did that was universally disliked. I mean, that entire season should be classified as a war crime in most countries, especially the final episode. But in this video, we are going to focus more on the ending of Daenerys and why it's most likely going to be similar in the books. Now I do have to clarify, I don't think Daenerys is going to go mad in the books. There was some foreshadowing of her going mad in the TV show. 13! When my dragons are grown, we will take back what was stolen from me and destroy those who have wronged me. We will lay waste to armies and burn cities to the ground. Turn us away, and we will burn you first. Ah, you are a true Targaryen. But that doesn't happen in the books. So it's important to know, just because I think Jon is going to unalive Daenerys in the books, just like how he did in the TV show, that does not mean it's going to go exactly like how it went in the TV show. But yeah, in case you forgot the final few episodes, which I'm sorry for bringing back these bad memories to you, but Arya stealth kills the Night King, the armies move down south to King's Landing. Cersei turns Missandei into Zeke Yeager. Daenerys wins the war. She for some reason goes after random civilians. And Tyrion convinces Jon to stop Daenerys before she continues slaughtering innocent people. I swear to god I read better furry fanfiction porn than the script of season 8. And then she dies. But the reason why I mention all of that is to say that I don't think any of that will happen in the books. Besides that last part. The part of Jon unaliving Daenerys. But currently in the books, we leave at this important climax. Now John's death in the books is different, but the main thing you need to know about his death in the books for this video is that in the books, John isn't killed by Alistair Thorne and his evil minions. Alistair Thorne most likely had nothing to do with Jon Snow's stabbing, but the people who stabbed John in the books, John knows they aren't bad men. They aren't evil villains who wanted to kill him since day one of the Night's Watch. They aren't staying awake at night beating their meat to the thought of killing John. The people who stabbed him in the books are pretty decent people, and John gets killed because he broke his oath. He is a member of the Night's Watch, someone who can't dilly-dally in the wars of men, and he low-key went against that. In the TV show, he mainly gets jumped because he led in the wildlings, but in the books, John is headed down to Winterfell to save his sister Arya, or someone who he thinks is Arya, and he gets that because he broke his oath. So to be fair, his ending was justified from the point of view of the Night's Watch. It technically doesn't count as a betrayal since he literally broke his oath, and the reason why I mentioned this is because John's story and Daenerys' story are pretty mirrored. They both enter different cultures, they both lose their virginity in non-consenting ways, they both try ruling but fail, and they both have been mentored by Mormons. Are you from my country? Sir Jorah Mormont of Bear Island. I served your father for many years. Who am I? Who am I? Lord Commander. And who are you? So yeah, the stories are pretty similar. And I mean, Tyrion is our main point of view for the Game of Thrones, Jon is our main point of view for the Threat in the North, and Daenerys is our main point of view for dragons. I mean, I can go on and on. So the question is, is Jon Snow being game-ended, just a Jon Snow thing, and not going to be mirrored by Daenerys? Well, it could be. Like, Daenerys gives birth to dragons, and Jon doesn't. No dragons have come out of Jon's anus as of yet, even though he does have his own magical animal, so technically you can count that as another similarity. But obviously there are more, like Daenerys never kills a white like Jon does, and Jon doesn't have his kin executed like Daenerys did. But I would still argue that Jon dying is going to be mirrored in some way for Daenerys. Now to say that Daenerys going mad is the only way to justify her death and the books is just wrong. I know Daenerys stands are a lot more toxic than other fan bases, and they really don't want to hear that Daenerys burning alive a rape victim, who literally killed her rapist leader, isn't a huge girl boss moment that a lot of people, especially Daenerys fans, want to believe it is. It's actually a very dark scene, but the reason why I mention this is to say 
Daenerys doesn't need to go mad and commit atrocities in order for her death to be justified. She's not a perfect person, just like every other character in A Song of Ice and Fire. And she's done multiple questionable things like the rest. But what will be the reason why Daenerys will die in the books? Well, it's gonna be very similar to the reason why Jon was killed in the books. Like, Jon didn't die because he did something morally wrong. Like he found Thanos' gauntlet or something, and is now gonna snap half the world away. He just broke his oath for understandable reasons, and the Night's Watch understandably ended him. And that's not what they did with Daenerys on the TV show. Have you been down there? Have you seen children, little children, burned? I tried to make peace with Cersei. She used their innocence as a weapon against me. Daenerys in season 8 has no justification. She was just like, you know, John, stuff happens. I didn't mean to burn those children. Drogon saw a spider and wanted it dead. Don't blame me now. Or whatever she said on the TV show. But Daenerys in the final episode has no moral high ground to stand on. It's just bad writing for a great character. If they did want to go this route, I wish they made Daenerys kind of like Eren Yeager from Attack on Titan. Like maybe Daenerys had to burn innocent people or else they would be resurrected by the Night King, and they would only make him more powerful, that would've been much cooler than we got. Because what we got with Daenerys going into crazy 15 IQ mode just didn't make any sense. But one thing about this ending that does make some sense is that her death is technically a betrayal. Now, betraying Season 8 Daenerys should be looked from the same lens as betraying Hitler is definitely the right decision. But still, Jon technically does betray Daenerys, just like how Jon feels he got betrayed by the Night's Watch. You swore a vow. I, I pledged my life to the Night's Watch. I gave my life. For all nights to come. They killed me, Ed. My own brothers. So John being killed and Danny being killed is one parallel. John being betrayed and Danny being betrayed is another. And both of their betrayals actually being justified is the third parallel. I really think George is cooking hard with this man. Now some of you might be asking, well technically, Jon Snow came back to life. <laughs> And yeah, that's very true. John in the books is probably gonna come back to life and is needed to come back to life in order for this video to make sense. But it's pretty universally accepted that he will return. But the reason why I mentioned this is because if Jon Snow returns from the dead, then surely Daenerys should be resurrected as well, right? And you are right. This is another thing that the TV show did that I'm like, yeah, this kind of works. And before people say that the TV show writers made up a bunch of randomness and put it together, that's just not true. George R.R. R. Martin has said that the book ending and the TV show ending they won't be too far apart. But I'll go deeper into what George thinks at the end of this video. But either way, in the TV show, it is heavily implied that Drogon took Daenerys to be resurrected. And Drogon? Any word? He was last spotted flying east. To the farther away, the better. Perhaps I can find him. Do carry on with the rest. As you wish, Your Grace. I think Daenerys is not going to actually be resurrected by the end of the books. In fact, I don't even think it's going to be fully implied, but I think that the possibility of Daenerys being resurrected is going to be the big cliffhanger. But because the story is over, it doesn't really matter. It's just going to be a big epic what if moment. He looks down at what he's done, terrible and necessary. End of Game of Thrones. Woo! But because of George R.R. R. Martin doing it, it's going to be a lot better. Now that we got all of that out of the way, the question is, why does it have to be Jon? Because someone like Jorah, killing Daenerys, it would be a lot darker and possibly more cooler. And you also have Tyrion. Tyrion being the one to game on Daenerys would make a lot of sense as well. Tyrion in the books is brokenly evil to his core. And when Daenerys kills Jaime, Tyrion might realize that Jaime really did love him and that he was just insecure about everything and he might kill Daenerys and avenge him. And that would most likely also be a betrayal because Tyrion will most likely be on team Daenerys in the final two books. I mean, Tyrion is kind of responsible for the death of Daenerys in the TV show in some way. Who is the greatest threat to the people now? My sisters will be loyal to the throne. Why do you think Sansa told me the truth about you? Because she doesn't want Danny to be queen. She doesn't get to choose. No, but you do. And you have to choose now. But I don't think it's gonna be Tyrion. Tyrion is my favorite character in the books and the TV show. But I would say if anything, Daenerys has a higher chance of killing Tyrion. But either way, I don't think Tyrion will be that guy to kill Daenerys. So they kind of just leave Jorah, Jon, and possibly something to do with the White Walkers. Now I'm not going to talk about the White Walkers, or how Daenerys might sacrifice herself in order for a prophecy to be fulfilled, and that's how the Long Night will end. Like I said in my other video, 
I do think Daenerys is a Zora High Reborn, and I think she needs to be alive for the long night to be over. And to Jorah, on the other hand, I don't think he will make it to the final book. I think he most likely will be finished off in the Winds of Winter, possibly by Euron or Victorion Greyjoy, or even Tyrion or Sir But the main reason why I think it's going to be Jon, instead of Jorah, is because we already have foreshadowing of Daenerys' death. Daenerys Targaryen has wed some Dothraki horse lord, what of it? Should we send her a wedding gift? A knife, perhaps a good sharp one, and a bold man to wield it. Jorah is not a bold man. This man is like if Harvey Weinstein and P. Diddy had a baby, and it wouldn't make too much sense for Robert to foreshadow something with Jorah. But you know who is a bold man? Jon Snow. In the books, Jon Snow was the definition of nah, I'm gonna do my own thing, even though he died for that but whatever. But Jon killing Daenerys would be the ultimate betrayal, and it would make so much sense for Jon Snow's story and Daenerys' story. Daenerys being betrayed by the only other Targaryen, assuming young Griff is a Blackfire, but that's a topic for another video. But Daenerys being stabbed and betrayed by a Targaryen is showing signs of the brutal system that Targaryens have created, and it would be the only meaningful death for Daenerys since she for the most part has been proud of her last name. Her last name and her dragons are the only things that haven't betrayed her since the death of her brother Viserys. Daddy, please! And it does make sense for Jon Snow since Jon killing Daenerys is symbolic of him killing his Targaryen side. It's him choosing his Stark identity. It's him knowing that Ned Stark is his real dad and his real protector, and is going to be great since he could have just let Danny live, and Danny could be queen, and Jon could be king or something, but Jon refusing to let the cycle repeat itself is just so much better, and Jon can let the throne go after Drogon burns it. Now if you didn't know, there is a behind the scenes book called Fire Cannot Kill a Dragon, and in the book, George R.R. R. Martin confirms that he gave the TV show writers a few things, like Stannis burning his daughter, Hodor's name being Hold the Door, and he also confirms that he gave the TV show writers who will be king at the end of the books, and that's why Bran becomes king in season 8, in the most rushed way possible. And who has a better story than Bran the Broken? <laughs> But George also said that he gave the ending to the major characters as well. And Daenerys and Jon are arguably the most important major characters apart from Tyrion, so it's pretty likely that he gave them Daenerys' ending. And I'm gonna be honest, I don't think Dumb and Dumber could write something like this. Like the whole Drogon picking up her body and going to revive her in Tilted Towers. And Jon and Danny does work with the whole ice and fire thing. Daenerys saving the world from ice and Jon saving the world from fire. Well, of course, the two outlying ones, the things that are going north at the Wall and uh, Daenerys Targaryen on the other continent with her dragons are, are of course, the ice and fire of the, of the title, A Song of Ice and Fire. But yeah, Book Daenerys is one of my favorite characters of all time. In the TV show, she's kind of mid, especially the last two to four seasons. That's every character. But as much as I would love to see Daenerys have a happy ending and swimming with a bunch of lemons, I don't think it's happening. I know there's a document where George had Daenerys surviving until the end, but this document is obviously not relevant anymore. He literally doesn't do like 99% of the things on here. But yeah, hopefully I didn't piss off too many Daenerys fans with this video. Those people are very passionate about her, and more so in a toxic way. But yeah, that's it for this video. Like, subscribe, and peace, peace.